Hello everyone and welcome to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Now in this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up the modular building system asset that you can find in the description below and what's included in the project, how to play around and build a few things. And then finally, I'm gonna show you a direct walkthrough of importing your own custom models from Blender or whatever FBX you choose to import and then setting those up to use with the modular building system. So without further ado, let's show a quick demonstration. So now that we are in the level, you can use the left mouse button to pick up an object and you can use the left mouse button to place that object on the ground. If you press E, you'll rotate the object to the right. If you press Q, you'll rotate the object to the left. And then to cycle between the snap points, which are all of these different points on the mesh, you press F and G. And that will allow you to do things like this. Shift blocks around or place them upwards like that. So that is just a quick overview between all the snap points. There's also a free place system, which instead of placing blocks directly on snap points, like here you'll be able to place them around until you reach a certain distance. And that distance is fully customizable inside of the player pawn. But what's really nice about this system is you can place objects on different angles of the collision. So you really have full customization to how and where you want to allow the player to place different blocks. Another system, another quick demonstration of the snap points is like that. So it's a super versatile system and it will be able to satisfy all the needs for your modular building projects. So a quick overview of what's included inside of the project is the assets and you'll find all the materials, the meshes, sounds, and texture files. And then in the blueprint folder, you'll find all of the player, the UI, the interactables, which are all of the blocks. Here's the master comp the master block, and here are the snap components. And you'll find all the included medium blocks, and then you'll find all of the included small blocks. So without further ado, let's get into how you can actually import your own custom meshes into Unreal Engine 5 and then use it and set it up with the modular building system. So in Blender, I have this custom Y block that I 3D modeled. Let's get started. So you want to model whatever object you want. You don't have to add these visual indicators for snap points, but I feel like it gives the player a nice indication of where they can snap objects. But what you want to do is you want to go to File, Export, and Export as an FBX. So here is where I'm going to export my mesh, and I'm going to export the selected object and I'm going to call it static mesh underscore small underscore Y block. Export this. So now that we have that exported, I'm going to create a new folder called tutorial. And in this folder, I'm going to import that static mesh that we just created. We're not going to auto generate our missing collision And now that we have our mesh imported, we're going to double click and open that up. So we're going to assign our materials really quickly like that. And then I'm going to go to the front view where we can start adding our collision. So we want to keep the collision relatively simple because we are using primitives and the where you can edit and you can edit that under the collision tab in the primitives section. And I am going to have it at this size. So full disclosure, keep the collision a tiny bit smaller than the actual mesh because I find that it's better to have a little bit of mesh overlap. Um, it's better to have a little bit of the mesh overlap as opposed to having a block float on top of another block. Um, I just feel that it looks a little bit cleaner because you don't really notice the overlapping as much as you notice the floating blocks and the floating meshes. And then once we have that, we're going to rotate this at 45 degrees. So let's set that to 45 degrees and add this collision. And we're going to alt left drag and add the other collision. So now that we have our collisions added, we can see in wireframe, we've got all of that 
add it, and we don't have any empty space. So let's close that. Now we're going to add a blueprint. We're going to click down on all classes and type in bp underscore block and click the block. We're going to name this bp underscore block underscore small underscore y block. And that's just to keep the naming convention the same. You, you can obviously name this whatever you'd like or start your own naming convention. But this is what I've picked for this project. So let's drag it in. Double click on the actor and open it up. And then let's change the static mesh to our y block. Okay. So now that we have the y block added to our project, first things first is we need to add our snap points. So by default, you need at least one snap point. Um, if you don't have a snap point, I'll demonstrate that now. It will actually just take the origin point of your actor, and obviously that does not look good. You could still rotate it, but you can't cycle between any snap points, and the rotation will be incorrect. So I'll show you one snap point, and then I'll add the rest. So let's rotate that 180 degrees, and then move this to negative 12.5. And just a heads up, you want the up vector of the snap point, which is also indicated by the red dot on the sphere, to be pointed in the normal direction of your snap point. And we can see that right here. So you can notice that it's picking the first snap point, and everything is already aligned correctly. And we can attach it to different objects. But we can notice that we can't snap any points onto any of the other visual indicator of the snap points, but we could still free place along the collision. Now you'll notice that the collision is taken into account when uh, placing objects, so you can't have overlapping objects. You can change the code and obviously override this feature, but I feel like it makes it a bit, um, but I feel like that collision check really makes it feel a bit more realistic. So let's move on and start adding our other snap points. We can let's change our snap angle to 90 degrees, make it a bit easier. And we're going to add these. Now try to keep all of the units consistent. So if you place multiple blocks on top of each other, you won't have any weird offsets. This just kind of keeps everything precise. And now we're going to add the snap points up here. And once again, I'm going to go to the front view and align these like this. We're going to drag it into place like so. And then we're going to copy and paste. We're going to flip the Y value and then just rotate it. in the correct orientation, just like that. So now that we have all of our snap points, we need to determine the order that we would like to cycle between the snap points. And I would say that we would want to cycle between the snap points in this direction. So we're gonna have this at priority. This is gonna be index zero, index one, index two, index three, index four, and then five and six. And now with our Y block, we can cycle between these snap points in the order that we told it to. And we have our working mesh. And then you could also see that if we try to place an object on those snap points, it does indeed work. And although that's colliding into the ground, you can place it on the ground like that. So that is how you import your own custom models into uh, Unreal Engine 5 using the modular building system. And if you want to tweak any values, such as the snap size, which is demonstrated by this feature, um, these have a snap size of index 1, and these have a snap size of index 0. So you cannot place a larger snap size onto a smaller one you can only place a smaller snap size onto a larger one. 
Um, and you can adjust that. Okay. We can now see if we check this box and we go to the connection size of the actor right here, we can now place the larger blocks on top of the Y block because it's now classified as a connection size of one. Now with a snap size of one, like I said, you can place smaller objects on top of the snap size, but you cannot place a larger snap size onto an actor with a smaller snap size. It just will not work. Um, if you don't want this limitation in your game, keep all the snap sizes at the default value, which is zero, and you won't have to worry about that. But it is an added feature that um, I thought I would add into the project. So if you have any questions, please add them in the comments below. Feel free to reach out to my support email, which would be in, linked in the description of this YouTube video and on the Marketplace page. I also have a Discord server, so if you want to ask any um, more unique questions or questions specific to your project, feel free to ask them there, and I'll see if I can get back to you as fast as possible. And if you like the asset, feel free to leave a review. It helps out a lot, and hope you enjoy the asset. Um, and until the next one, guys, I'll see you later.